Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Good morning, Tracy Bogan. How are you today? Good morning, Tracy Bogan, dreampreneur. <laughs> Welcome to our we, we Choose to Thrive call. Um, this is an interview that we're doing to give inspiration and hope to people that are just starting out on their journey of healing. We want to send a message that we can thrive. So tell us a little bit about your past history and what happened for you to lead you to the place you are today? That's a long story. I'll give you the thumbnail of it. Yeah, I, I was sexually abused from five until 14 by my relatives who were also my neighbors. We lived on the same block. And I had gone the majority of my life until I was 19 and I met my best friend, keeping my silence and protecting our dirty little secret. And it was when I met my best friend, Amy, and I shared it with her that she said, you don't have to hold the secret any longer. Let it loose. Tell your family, you know, free yourself because obviously you're stuck, you're stifled, you're directionless. Let's get you back on track. So I actually asked her to go tell my mother and father because I did not have the courage to and I was too embarrassed to. When she did... That was that was enough for me at the time, and and then when my parents made the choice to confront them, one uncle admitted it, and the other one publicly denied it. Though in a conversation with me right after I told my best friend, I called each one of them and I said, "Listen, I remember what you did to me. All I'm asking." is for an apology. At that time, they both gave me the apology over the phone, but when push came to shove, when they were actually confronted with it, one actually did come clean and said he would cut off his right arm to take it back. He didn't know what came over him and that he apologized. And the other one just denied it until his untimely death by suicide uh, just a little over a year ago. Uh, I spent an entire decade of the 90s lost, disconnected from my body, from my past, from my purpose. I was completely directionless, and I sabotaged everything in every relationship in my life. I jumped from therapist to therapist, counselor to counselor from Wisconsin to Hawaii and all the places and states that I lived in between, from personal development courses to workshops to bungee jumping to antidepressants A through Z. You name it, I, I was on it, and I was looking for something outside of me to fix me, to heal me, to take it away. And that was for an entire decade of my life. And then I don't know if it was age or maturity or the point that I was at in my life where I started to feel somewhat grounded and somewhat with a sense of self-purpose and self-awareness. And I began deepening my myself and filling myself and my core and my soul with delicious books and deep personal development trainings and workshops and seminars and eventually started working with a coach and eventually went into my own business and backpacking in the world and really doing what felt good and correct to me. So at some point... It, it shifted. I went from victim because oh, I spent years being the best victim mm -hmm. and, and allowing the story of me being sexually abused as a child <clears throat> to dictate what I was capable of and not capable of and even just not interested in. That was always my excuse and reason why or why I did or could do something. Yeah, you know, I always hear women, even myself included, for a decade call ourselves a survivor of child sexual abuse, but now I consider myself to be a champion of sexual abuse because when you're, when you're in the mindset of surviving subconsciously, you're, all of the proper event situations, conditions, and 
And things show up in your life that will always lead to you having to be the survivor of it. Mm -hmm. But when you're a champion, champion of it, those words have power and those words have weight. I really like the, the champion part. I've been calling it thriving. The champion even gives it the fuller body to, to express what that healing process can entail. Yeah. I was going to expand on the champion. And that even people who call themselves a survivor, a cancer survivor, that's like the worst wording and the worst thing that you can say to yourself because words have weight. Be a champion of cancer. That words, it's scientifically proven that words have weight and it's called a hertz. That you can you can measure the, the weight of that. And it's important. I know one of your questions is what you know, what advice do I have for someone? who's just beginning their journey uh, of their spiritual awakening, who are in the roar of their becoming, who are stepping into away from being the victim mentality and really embarking on the journey of taking their power back. And that is to pay attention to the words that you speak to yourself. Beautiful. Yes. Because those words have weight and those words speak to your subconscious mind that, that feed and flood, your being on the cellular level and the soulful level of who you are. So be really mindful on what you say to yourself and what you call yourself and how do you refer what you refer your to yourself as. So be a champion. Be a champion. I love that. So resources have you turned did you turn to to start with that you could recommend to somebody else? The resources I started with are not the ones I will recommend. Very good. I, but, I, but I will give you my best one that I ended with that I'm still practicing now. Me starting off on the journey, I'm the type of person who does things the long, slow, hard way, crawling my way through the dark to figure it out. I'm not the person who will buy something and actually read the directions. <laughs> the last thing that I will do, I will figure it out on my own and get it put together, and it doesn't matter if it's wobbling and ready to fall apart. I put it together. <laughs> I don't recommend that. So, you know, here's another piece of advice that I have for someone just getting ready on the path is to, to go in the direction and seek advice and only listen to those who have been there before you, to those who have climbed the mountain, to those who, who have experienced in some realm or some way what you're getting ready to embark on and ask for their expert advice. People can shortcut the process by a lot. So I started off talking to my friends who didn't know any more than I did, uh, and then reading books, and, which, were, which were good. But again, for me, that's the long, slow, hard way of having to read and process. And most of the time, not, most people don't implement and so you don't know it unless you're living it. It doesn't matter how many books you read. I could turn my computer and show you my wall of books. Those don't matter unless you're applying it into your life. So I would read it, and it would go in here and out here, and I would only grasp a thing here or there. So it was the long, slow road. The other thing that I did, I started off as a therapy, and a lot of people are going to get their feathers ruffled over what I'm about to say. And, and I mean this soulfully from my personal experience. As a result of a decade, countless therapists, psychologists, and here is what worked for me. Out of everything that I've done, from bungee jumping to skydiving to backpacking around the world to the reading, the therapy, the antidepressants, and everything A through Z in between, for me, my greatest breakthroughs in my life that have led me right here today on the path and the journey that I am, that practice is called Quantum Pathic. It's in Scottsdale, Arizona. The lady who runs, developed that program, her name is Sherry Anshara. And she is not a healer, and there is nothing new age about this. This is a process where you lay on a table that looks like a massage table, and she's touching on certain points of your body and walking you through, you heal you. She's assisting you to walk through the process of the age and the stage and the illness or the, the emotional uh, trauma, whatever elements have in your system, and walking it back down to the cellular memory and memorization to release that experience 
on your own coming from you, from the inside out. That there are no outside external forces, no therapist, no psychologist, psychiatrist, psychologist, no bungee jump, no trip around the world, nothing outside of you will clear that cellular memory and cellular memorization other than your willingness to be able to do the work and put in the sweat equity to actually have a emotional release and breakthrough. It is the single most transforming and profound work I've ever discovered. I'm still practicing it today, just last Tuesday, on my yoga mat, on a towel, on my living room floor. For two hours, I walk through on my own because she teaches you how to do it. You can do it at your home, at your leisure. I had a quantum leap breakthrough on something that has been bugging me and causing me neck and back pain for a long time. I haven't had back and neck pain since last Tuesday, since the moment that I knew that I cleared it. And I traced it all the way back to my age five inner child in, in that process. So I know this is a long-winded answer. This is what worked for me. This is my personal experience that I share that has been the most profound and transformational and beneficial points in my life. What it really is and comes down to is learning how to connect with your body, how to connect with that inner child, that woundedness, um, how to connect with your soul, with your heart, with your heartness, with your heart space. And that's a beautiful position because when you're connected with your body, it's impossible for any person to be inside of their head. Mm -hmm. And most of us go through the day with our thinky, thinky brain thinking our way through a problem. You can never solve the problem from the same mind that you, that you created it with, ever. When you're connected with your body, you're not in your mind. That's where your intuition comes in or into play. Mm -hmm. So you're able to feel your way through a process to make breakthroughs. So another piece of advice that I have for a person just stepping into the journey of, of that awakening of your roar of your becoming on what this all means and, and how you attracted it into your life and how you can empower yourself and step into your light, into your biggest, bigger purpose and, and sense of worth on the value that you can take away instead of being, being the victim, being the champion, and sharing your light with others because we're all light. And the only way to dispel darkness is with light, and you are a light. And, and this is a great way for you to engage in your light. One of the steps would be is even if you start back at the beginning like I did, even if you don't want to require to, or desire to take the quantum leap into quantum pathic, you can still start with reading. You can still start with mentoring, finding a mentor. Even finding a mentor for me has been more progressive and more, um, more productive in terms of physical results, like results that I can see, than laying on someone's couch, bellowing and crying and remaining in this puddle of victimhood week after week as you stir all this up. Get proactive. And the first step really begins by making the choice to choose it and choose it and be committed to it and to allow yourself the quiet time in the space to connect with yourself. Even if it's for five minutes a day while you're sitting on the toilet, no matter how busy your lives are, we all have the same 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It's create that time block it in on your calendar every day from six to eight my phone reminder pops up that it's time for my power hour <laughs> this story was brought to you by the woman i love at www.thewomanilove.com if you are starting down the path to healing no matter what stage our united message is that you are not alone we do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong, and uniting can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal, but the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this 
we choose to thrive revolution, reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.